Good morning, Essex. Good morning. It is great to see you all this morning. Thank you so much for uh, being here. I know it's important to acknowledge uh, that you have a choice with what you could do with your Sunday mornings. And I know many of you might want to be at home watching the U.S. women's basketball team play for gold. But hopefully you've set your DVRs. Typically what we like to do is we like to have our cell phones silenced uh, during our service. But if anyone does get an update on the score of the game, uh, feel free to uh, just chime in. We, we do have uh, a few guests with us. Uh, this morning, Amy Hollis, the pastor at the Essex Baptist Church, is on vacation. So we have a number of folks uh, that are worshiping with us from right up the street. Would you do me a favor? Make them feel welcome and give them a round of applause. And thank you for joining us this morning. We do have a welcome to worship uh, guest book in our lobby. If you'd like to take a moment to sign that and let us know you were here, especially if you uh, are here visiting with us for perhaps the first time. In your bulletin, you will see a number of announcements. I'd love to just highlight some of those as we go through uh, our morning together. You'll see that there's a jazz concert on the green uh, coming up this Saturday. Um, I'm actually going to be on vacation next Sunday, so Jeff... Uh, you usually say Jeff uh, Birch will be in the pulpit. Uh, Jeff Birch will be behind the music stand, I guess is what we'll say. Um, he'll be preaching next week. Uh, Thursday, September 5th, our second annual fundraiser at the Ivoryton Playhouse uh, for Margaritaville. The tickets that we were able to purchase in advance to support that fundraiser uh, need to be returned. The unsold uh, tickets need to be returned in, in another week or two. So if you haven't gotten those tickets yet, let me encourage you to call the office uh, this week and sign up for those. Uh, Sunday, September 8th, a new member class, and then Sunday, September 15th, homecoming Sunday, and we will receive new members as well. And always remember, you can find out all of this information on our website at essexucc.org. We, we don't pass the plates. Uh, during our summer months either. We do have collection plates in the back if you, have, uh, if you would like to support our church with cash or check. There's also a QR code in your bulletin if you would like to give electronically. Today is a day of culmination. Um, we are going to wrap up our Pentecost 2.0 sermon series that we've been on for a number of weeks, a number of months actually. We've been following the the fruit of the Spirit and the imagery of Pentecost and what it means to walk in the Spirit. So, uh, so I put on the red stole today uh, because we're focusing on how God's Spirit makes a difference in our lives, how God's Spirit produces characteristics or virtues or fruit as it's referred to uh, in the Scripture so that we can then go out into the world and make a difference. Throughout the scripture, God's spirit is referred to as fire, as in Pentecost. It's also represented as a dove, at Jesus' baptism, at, as wind. And in a very strange story that I sent you all in our e-news this week, as breath. There's this vision, this story from the book of Ezekiel that's often referred to as the valley of dry bones. I sent it out. Did anybody read it? No, actually, don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands. I hope you had a chance to read it. If not, go back and take a look. It's this crazy prophecy, this vision that Ezekiel has, where God shows him a valley of dry bones, right? And the imagery is these bones slowly become uh, alive, come, come back to life. And God breathes into these bones new life, right? These bones live again. That's sort of the, uh, the foundation for the special music you'll hear uh, in just a few moments. The, the idea of we say to dry bones, come alive, right? This, this imagery from this story in Ezekiel. As we begin this morning, we are going to invite God's presence, God's spirit into this place, into our hearts, into our lives. Number 281 in your black hymnal, Come Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove. Let's rise together in body or spirit.
and peace be with you. Before you sit down, let me challenge you to find a new face this morning. Introduce your somebody you don't know and greet them with the peace of Christ. That's nice, it's always nice to see a new face or an old friend uh, or someone you haven't seen in a little while. Um, for those of you uh, from up the street, what we typically like to do in these next few moments is just take some time uh, and share with one another the joys and concerns uh, of our heart, the, the things that we have celebrated over this past week and the things that have maybe confounded us uh, a little bit uh, as well. Sometimes this imagery of, of dry bones from Ezekiel can, can be what we feel like. You know, we feel decimated, we feel exhausted, we feel uh, brittle. Think of all of, of that kind of imagery. So, so for our prayer time and our special music, this is one of the verses from Ezekiel. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. That's a, that's a Pentecost verse, right? That's that whole idea of God's spirit within us uh, as a time of renewal, as a time of uh, new life. So I'm not sure if there are things that anybody would like to share about some of the good things that are going on in their lives. But uh, I'll just open it up to anybody who would like to say anything. Boy, that wasn't it. Yeah. I just wanted to announce to all of you who may not know that we received this week a $5,000 grant from the Kitchings Family Foundation uh, to go towards our uh, Make a Difference meals. So between that and the grant we received from the Community Foundation, we now have $10,000 in the kitty for our meals. That's great. Right. That's fantastic. That's great. Thank you, Mary Lawrence. Are there other things that, yep, coming over, Beth. Thanks, Dave. You bet. Um, my husband, Rick, has been defeating cancer for the last nine years, and he's turning 70 on Friday. Wow, that's great news. Congratulations. Congratulations. Is this about, is this about Paula? Yeah. Can you save that to the end? I'm going to save that to the end. Right. Oh, coming to Joan, coming to Joan. And thank you, too, to Mary Lawrence for writing these grant applications. Oh, that's great. Mary Lawrence, if you, if you drive by Mary Lawrence's house at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, there's a candle burning just by that window, and she's, she's writing those grant applications. Um, yes, Lori. I just want to thank you all. It's a, always a joy to be here in Essex. My parents were living right up the street from 2002 till five years ago when dad moved to Chester Village. And of course, we've, we've lost mom in the meantime two years ago. But I feel her spirit very much here, especially in the choir loft. That's right. And I appreciate that whenever I come back to sing, Sherry's always so generous to, to um, include me in the choir. And I have always felt like it's coming home. 
And it still feels that way. It always feels that way. Church is a special place. That's why we are able to uh, come together during this time and share the wonderful things in our lives. David's game is pickleball, and my game, which I've given up mostly of, is golf. And I was touched by the, the ceremonies when Scott got the gold and broke down and cried mm. in the presentation. It's That's nice great. to see that. That's great. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. There's uh, a lot of good news uh, that we celebrate uh, during this time. Uh, I often say that all you have to do is turn on the TV for your prayer requests and watch a news show, watch a newscast, watch a news bulletin, and you will be given uh, plenty uh, to pray for. Uh, not sure if you saw the video of that plane crash, that very odd, strange plane crash that just seemed to fall out of the sky. Uh, apparently, 60 folks died uh, during, during that plane crash. And just think of the folks who are um, affected by those 60 deaths. There's multiple folks uh, as well. Also heard this week on the news that 90 people were killed in the Middle East conflict that's going on right now uh, as a result of an attack. So, so as, we, as we celebrate the things um, that are great in our life, the things that warm our hearts, there are those things that try and challenge our hearts as well, which is even more of a reason to look to this verse uh, that God will be with us in spirit. Uh, we'll put God's spirit within us so that we might live and be renewed. With that in mind, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather. Uh, we thank you this morning for the opportunity for two churches to gather together for worship. May our unity in our love for you and our love for our neighbor Inspire us this day as we pray and sing and are silent and reflect on how you might call us, renew us and revive us with your spirit to go into the world so that we might have an impact, so that we might share your love. May our hearts be renewed and changed so that we might see the needs around us, so that we might offer practical and tangible help to those in need. May our hearts come alive within us so that in all that we think, say, and do, we may be mindful of the needs of those around us, those who are hungry, those who are homeless, those who are lonely, those who have lost loved ones. And because you have called us to hold the needs of others as dear to us as our own, we now silently lift up all those who have asked for our prayers this day. And we pray now together with the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Cause there's so much we have lost We look down the road Where all the prodigals have walked And one by one the enemy Has whispered lies Led them off as slaves But we know that you are God Yours is the victory we know that there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. Yeah. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive. Come alive, up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise, as we call out to dry bones, come alive. God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back. The wayward sun, and by your spirit breathe upon them. Show the world that you alone can save. You alone can save. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the let us see an army rise as we call out to dry bones come alive. So breathe a breath of God now. Breathe a breath of God. Breathe a breath of God now. Breathe. Breathe a breath of God. breath of God now breathe as we call out to dry bones come alive come alive we call out to dead hearts come alive come alive up out of the ashes let us see an army rise as we call out to dry bones come alive If you were here last week, you'll remember me saying that we were gonna use the same scripture reading um, two weeks in a row. Last week, we focused on the middle section of this passage. Today, we're gonna focus on the, the front half and the back half, or the front, the introduction and the, and the closing of this passage, uh, sort of like bookends. So those of you uh, who are with us from Essex, um, Essex Baptist, don't think that I'm ignoring the middle of this passage in the sermon. Uh, we're going to focus on the, on, on the beginning and the end of this passage uh, that Susan is going to read for us. Thanks, Susan. Okay, this, so this reading is from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. May grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. God's divine power has given us everything we need for a life of godliness through our knowledge of the one who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these things, God has given us precious and magnificent promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature since you have escaped the corruption that evil desires have brought 
into the world. Because you have these blessings, do all you can to add to your life these things. To your faith, add goodness. To your goodness, add knowledge. To your knowledge, add self-control. To your self-control, add endurance. To your endurance, add godliness. To your godliness, add kindness. And to your kindness, add love. For if you have these qualities in abundance, it will show that what you know about our Lord Jesus Christ has made your lives useful and meaningful. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. The church that I grew up in um, kind of had a tradition of uh, kids in Sunday school memorizing Bible verses or having a favorite verse, right, and, and, and memorizing it. Sometimes they refer to those as a life verse. You know, what's your life verse? Well, it's tough to have a life verse when you're 12 years old, right? I mean, you, you really don't know too much yet. And I've had a, a couple favorite life verses uh, over the years. Um, some of you may know that I'm a drummer. So one of my first favorite life verses is uh, from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord with loud clashing cymbals, right? That was a, a favorite verse for, for quite some time. When Becky and I got married, we used uh, a passage from Colossians 3 uh, as our wedding verse. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with love and forgiveness and humility. And it was just a wonderful way to uh, set the stage for our wedding. This passage that we've been looking at the last couple of weeks um, has recently, I must say, moved into first place as a favorite verse, a favorite summary life verse, because it's a straightforward, simple explanation of what practical Christianity looks like in our lives, right? And that's everything that we've been talking about during this in, entire sermon series. The, the, the first part of that bookend uh, that we heard as Susan read it was, may grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace in abundance. Abundance. Where's my Italians? Abundance. Abundance. I think of those Thanksgiving cornucopias, right, that flow out with abundance. I think of the dinner of the three, of the seven fishes, right, abundance, just lots and lots of overflowing abundance. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. In addition to grace and peace, we get other things, but it's important to remember that God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. That's the next part of that introduction. Everything we need for a life of godliness. Remember uh, those of you who were here last week, and I'm sorry, Essex, it's tough to kind of, Essex Baptist, it's tough to kind of hop in on a part two of a sermon series. It's, it's really not, it's, it's a standalone, but there were some references from last week. If you were here last week, do you remember what that uh, shopping list I had? I showed that picture of the shopping list. That was before I went shopping. This is what our shopping list looked like after we're done shopping, right? Right? We scratch everything out, right? And if we don't do that, we either get it twice, and if we don't take the list, we forget. But when you're done shopping, your list should look like this, which will indicate that you have everything you need, right? We were going to make a dinner, and we needed this list. We had everything we need. What's it like to have everything you need? What does it feel like? Good, right? Secure, lucky, amen, right? Fingers crossed that we could have everything we need. But secure, 
safe. You, you have everything you need. God has given us everything we need to live a godly life. We were going to make a dinner. We had everything we needed. It was in the pantry. We just needed to go and get it, right? We needed to pull it out of the pantry. We had it. We just had to, we just had to use it. And God has given us these things, these promises, these gifts, these fruits, so that we might be, in the next verse, partakers of the divine nature. What on earth does that mean? Partake, this is one of the most amazing phrases, uh, I think, in scriptures. Partakers of the divine nature, that is Pentecost 101, that God's nature would somehow participate with us. Part, we, we can partake of that nature. If you remember over the course of this Pentecost sermon series, we, we saw God's spirit as tongues of fire, right? We saw God's spirit as a dove at Jesus' baptism. Come Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, we just sang that wonderful, wonderful hymn. In the Hebrew scriptures, there's that pillar of fire and pillar of smoke, right? God's presence, God's spirit leading the children of Israel. And the outcome of these promises and presence, uh, pre the promise of the presence of the spirit is participation in the divine nature. The, the $20 seminary word for that is theosis or divination. And those are kind of fancy words. Let me see if I can kind of help you uh, grasp this concept uh, with an idea that might be familiar. Remember when you were in fourth grade, fifth grade, eighth grade, high school? and you had to study for a test. Do you remember that? What was that like? Not good. Not good. We, had, we had good earlier, we had not good. Right, it's not good, right? And we would resort to all kinds of tricks to, to, to study, right? We would even sleep with our textbooks under our pillows right? Thinking that all of that knowledge might seep into our brains. Do you remember what they used to call that? Osmosis. Osmosis. That is actually right. Some people use flashcards to study. I use osmosis. <laughs> I'm going to put that, pill that book under my pillow and all that's going to just seep right through. Osmosis is the spontaneous net movement or diffusion or transfer of solvent molecules through a selectively permeable membrane from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential. Yeah, exactly, right? When the spirit moves from one place to another, it's described as theosis or divination. We might be partakers of the divine nature. That's theological osmosis, right? Spiritual osmosis, that we might participate in the divine nature. And that's exactly what the whole Pentecost story, right, is about. God's spirit being with us. And so we're told then that if we have these qualities, remember, in abundance, we will be partakers of the divine nature. If we have these qualities in abundance, that's the second time that abundance has been mentioned, right? So if you have these qualities, what qualities are we talking about? Well, it's everything that this sermon series has been focused on. You know, we've got the fruits of the Spirit in the middle, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. But we discovered in this passage as well that there's, 
there's other virtues or other characteristics that really sound like the fruit of the Spirit. Things like faith and knowledge and endurance and simplicity and gratitude. And throughout the scriptures, there are things like compassion, humility, mercy, generosity, honesty, hope, and courage. If you have these qualities in abundance, in abundance, right? Remember patience? How's your, how's your merge on the interstate going these days? Right? We talk another not good, right? We talked about that. Not good. But when you have patience in abundance, things begin to change. We were all together a few weeks ago when we talked about goodness and generosity down on the green. And after communion, with all the generosity of the churches of Essex, there were 12 basketfuls left over for the shoreline soup kitchen and pantry. You had generosity in abundance and it made a difference in people's lives. When you have these qualities in abundance, it will show that what you know about the Lord Jesus has made your lives useful and meaningful. I love this phrase for so many reasons. If you have these qualities in abundance, it'll show that what you know about the Lord Jesus has made your lives useful and meaningful. The, the illustration a couple uh, last week was, you know, we're going to use these to refer to kind of the fruit of the Spirit, and, and we can read about the fruit of the Spirit all we want, right? We can study what's in this book all we want. We can put it under our pillow, right, and try and study as well. But until what's in this book, until those fruits of the Spirit, those qualities in abundance get into your life and make a difference in the world, right? That's what makes your lives useful and meaningful. This phrase is, is probably my, my favorite one of this, of this passage because it reflects the whole idea of our sermon series. How God's Spirit gets into us produces the fruit of the Spirit, and then we go into the world and change the world, that sense of practical Christianity. If you've heard me preach on, <coughs> excuse me, on, on wisdom literature, the definition of wisdom literature in the Scripture is so that we might be able to navigate life successfully. So this passage, this second bookend, this end of this passage tells us that when what we know in our brains gets added to that fruit of the Spirit and put into practice, what results will be a useful and meaningful life. We have everything we need to live a godly life. The question is, are we going to open the pantry? and put it into use, right? Who doesn't want a useful and meaningful life? That's what we strive for, to make a difference in the world. I guarantee when you put these things into practice, your lives will be useful and meaningful because what you know about God, what you know about the Lord Jesus, that's in your head, right? Will make it down to your heart and transform you. Seminary professors were fond of saying, the longest distance is the two feet between your head and your heart, right? <laughs> How do you get that knowledge from your head into your heart, and then into your hands to go and make a difference. Remember we said last week as well that 
Prayer doesn't necessarily change things, but prayer changes us, right? And we change things. This Pentecost, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that this sermon series is, is winding down. This has been such a joy to focus on this sense of, of practical Christianity, to stress and, and illustrate for us what a difference God's Spirit will make in our lives when we walk in the Spirit, when we walk humbly. You know, we've used this illustration of, of walking in the Spirit and the, the Christian life as a journey, right? Because a practical faith allows us to live out Jesus' great commandment, right? If our faith doesn't make a difference in how we love God and love others and do to them as we would have do to us, then, then our life is not meaningful and, and, and not useful. And, and that's the goal of this passage. Dare I say that's the goal of Jesus' entire ministry, to teach his followers how to love God and love their neighbor. Let's pray. God, be with us this day and transform our hearts. Breathe new life into us as you did for Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. As you did for Jesus' followers on Pentecost. May your spirit renew and revive and restore us as well in all that we think, say, and do, so that our lives may be useful and so that our lives may be meaningful. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 293 in your black hymnal. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Let's rise together.
be seated. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived. That's Pentecost, right? That's that spirit, that valley of dry bones that have been revived. That's God's spirit within us. I, I can't help but sing that song. Uh, and as we wrap down this sermon series, three people come to mind. I can't help but sing that song and think of Bob Johnson. Can't help but think of Bob Johnson singing that song. A very useful and meaningful life who impacted so many people, right? Do you remember when we first started this sermon series? We had a mascot. You get a big gold star and extra credit if anyone can remember the mascot that we started with weeks, months ago with this sermon series. Johnny Appleseed. Remember? Yeah. Remember Johnny Appleseed. We learned a lot about Johnny Appleseed. He was a missionary. He went around walking in the spirit from town to town for a season, making a difference in the lives of those around him. That's the second person I think of. Someone else who's made a difference in the lives of those around her is our very own Paul Merrick. Our very own Paul Merrick. She is, Paula is getting ready uh, to move in a couple weeks. And I know Paula has uh, been a big part of this church and lived a very useful and meaningful life, touched so many lives. I've only had the honor uh, of knowing Paula for two years and three weeks. Um, but there are others um, who have, have known her uh, a lot longer as well, and uh, we're going to hear just a little bit uh, from one of those people. Good morning, all of you. As, uh, as Dave just said, uh, Paula will be leaving us. She's going to go back to one of her original hometowns, Ashford, Connecticut, where she will be, among other things, a former first selectman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, <laughs> You, you did a tour of duty, and there it was go. appreciated. <laughs> uh, I have worked with Paula on a lot of the financials of the church. In the mid-1990s, Paula took over as treasurer when uh, Judd Paul decided he had done it long enough. Uh, she was a treasurer for 15 or 20 years. I can't remember exact dates until the, uh, the early 2010s when uh, Cheryl Harger took over for her. That was 15 to 20 great, <clears throat> great years. Uh, during that time period, I was predominantly the chair of the trustees, and, and she would remind us to be very careful about spending, and we, we took her advice, and we worked we worked very well together. So in addition to being treasurer of the church, in the community, for a number of years, she was treasurer of the Connecticut River Museum. She was a treasurer, I believe, of the Iverton Playhouse for a long period of time, and I think even the Essex Winter Series, if I have that right. And uh, all of that, is much appreciated. So I just wanted to say these few things and thank you for your help, Paula. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, and I must say, while, while I've only known her for two years and a couple of weeks, it didn't take long for people to tell me stories about Paula and what she did, the service to the church on, on mission trips and taking care of some of the young folks and just reaching out uh, to have a very, very useful and meaningful life, Paula. We want to thank you for all you've done to make this church what it is. We know you are um, getting ready 
to physically leave this church, but we thought it would be nice if we gave you just a little token uh, and memento so that you can take the church with you while you go. I hope you will all join us, even if you are just meeting Paula for the very first time this morning, uh, in our co-view room, in our parlor, as we celebrate, as we celebrate uh, her time uh, with us uh, here at, uh, at Essex. And as you all go from here, may grace and peace and love and joy and generosity and goodness and kindness be yours in abundance so that you may live a useful and meaningful life. Amen. <laughs>